So let us continue the step 3 of part 4, configuring the NAT. So based on this uh, scenario, the decision has been made that the entire organization should be using address in the 10001 space R1. These are applications of service one okay, address change without the entire system being rebuilt. So that is in order. So the first task is remove 192.168.1.0 from OSPF. Remove the appropriate network statement at R1. And then create a PCL to host allowed to be translated and that is create an ACL that matches the 192.168.1 so this one configure the port address translation on the outside interface of R1 so the outside interface of R1 is 0 slash 0 so we're going to configure the NAT here so our NAT is the outside here all right and then identify the involved in the NAT specify the inside or outside in the configuration or appropriate interface okay so from R1 Configuration for TAS for R1. Let's open R1 terminal. Cisco and pass. Enable Cisco and pass. Okay, so config the The first task is to remove the 192.168.1.0 from OSPF. So router OSPF, let us remove router OSPF1. And then uh, remove the appropriate network statement. So no network. This is the command, no network 192.168.1.0. Area zero, so that is the network statement for 192.168. Enter, then let us exit. So the next task is create an ACL to identify the host allowed. So that to identify the host allowed, allowed from this 192.168.1.0, we need to create an standard access list. Okay because uh, there is no other requirements just to allow the 192.168.1.0 network so let's let's create an access list Access the list. So I use the access list one and then permit permit one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot zero and then the wildcard mass zero dot zero dot zero dot two five five enter. And then configure port address translation on the outside interface of R1. The outside interface is this one. G0 is last zero. So the command is IP not IP not inside. 
type in inside source list the list is access list one list one interface g0 slash g0 slash 0 slash 0 okay that is the application of that and then that is since that is port address translation we need overload enter And then we need to specify the inside or outside on the appropriate interface. Identify the interface involved in the NAT. So let us identify involved in the NAT. That is interface G0 is less 0 is less 0. That is IP NAT outside and interface g0 is last 0 is last 1 this is the IP not inside All right so that's it exit now let us create a let us test let us first create a translation by creating a test to test the translation of the router. Let us try to ping, for example, let us ping again. Ping 10.167, ano, 67 that one that 50 okay now let us try to see the show IP not translations so as you can see the translation has been effective or it takes effect so this is the inside global and then then inside local and outside local are the same that means it was just being translated okay let us try another one let us access the let's say let us ping to online that one six five that two one that one all right and then let us test again show IP not translations Okay, so our translation, our NAT is working based on the given result. All right. Now, the last step is step four, back up all the device configuration. Using the TFTP server on PCB, back up the running configuration of all your devices to PCB using the TFTP protocol. Now let's try to change the computer into a server. Let us use the server.
let us uh, let us connect this as a server tft tp server this is 18 okay and let, let us turn on the the FTP server it should be on and let us configure the IP address 10.16 and then 10.67 Control C Control B Let us remove this for a while. Let us test the connectivity. Ping then that sixty seven that one that fifty. Okay, so that means it's a, there's a connection. Okay, so let us make a backup from our iOS going to the FTP server. Okay, so let us try to backup the iOS from routers into our TF TFTP server so after adding the TFTP server here we should configure it uh, let's turn on TFTP tracer so it's on already now let us try to back up the running config R1 try to ping first the TFTP server ping then that 67 that one that 50 okay so successful so let us copy the running config that's config TFTP okay then that 67 the IP address of the TFTP server that one that 50 destination file name for r1 let's use that one okay so it's, it's copied from a router to the ftp server let's try to copy back up the configuration cisco Successful, so let us copy running dash config tftp destination host then that sixty seven that one that fifty file name r two use that one okay so it's copied let's check the tftp server if it's copied open the FTP the FTP 
So the configuration files are there. The iOS of R1 and R2 is saved in the FTP server. This is just this is what basically the same effect when you're using the real TFTP device. All right, so that is an example of backing up or copying an iOS image from router to TFTP server.